hello everyone so today we are going to talk about json uh, the this it's part one part of the series of ajax based lectures so the main idea over here is to understand about the basics of json so that we can use it in ajax uh, request and response uh, so let's go with uh, what is json json and is an acronym stands for javascript object notation it is similar to xml uh, to, and designed to be human readable. It uses JavaScript notation, but it is platform independent. Uh, it doesn't depend on JavaScript. It can be used by any programming language, but it is it uses the notations that JavaScript uses for object definition. Uh, it is text-based code, uh, which is used to create objects. It is used for transmitting data, structured data, over the network. The main idea of JSON was introduced mainly to have a, a common representation of data that can be transmitted and can be understood by anyone requesting the data. Uh, JSON is primarily used, as I mentioned earlier, to transmit data between the server and the application. Web services and APIs use JSON format to uh, provide access to the data that they have. For example, Twitter, uh, you can use the data from the, from Twitter, uh, and this data is available to the to the program in the form of a, a JSON file. Uh, this can be done for other data such as weather data or Facebook data or um, any other data that is available uh, through APIs or web services. Uh, JSON is supported by most modern programming languages. The advantages of JSON is it is easy to read and write, as you can see a little while. Uh, it is lightweight text-based interchange format. It is purely text and it's easy to understand how it is formatted. And as I mentioned earlier, it is language independent. So it doesn't depend on a particular specific programming language. So let's dive into what JSON is. A JSON object is enclosed between two curly brackets as similar to how you define a function or how do you define an object inside JavaScript. So a JSON object is the, the top level uh, placeholder. The top level uh, starting and ending point of a JSON file is uh, an opening and closing bracket. So if let's see uh, how it looks like. So if in this program, you can see on the left hand side that this is a JSON viewer. So I'm going to type my JSON file over here so that you can see it. Uh, so let's open this in a, in a bigger screen so we can see this. Oh, let's keep it this way. It's, it's fine. So we have this opening and closing brackets over here that is used. Uh, whatever you write inside it would be a JSON file, a JSON object. Okay. Uh, JSON objects are based on a simple concept, which is everything inside a JSON is a name and value pair. Okay. So we can see this over here. We have key and this is a value. So this key is the identifier for this value which is stored here similar to an object in javascript in javascript when you create an object you create a key value pair for that specific object the names are in double quotations the values over here can either be strings can be numbers can be booleans can also be arrays that we are going to see in a little while and it can be objects as well okay and it can be null so let's take an example over here. So let's see, let's me, let me create an object which identifies me. So I'm going to start with say name and colon. So the key and the value pairs are separated by a colon and the key always has to be inside double quotations. Whereas the value depends on if the value is a number, uh, it doesn't have to be in double quotations. But if it is a string, it should be inside double quotations. So here, uh, it will be my name. Okay. And each one of them will be separated by a comma if you have more than one. Uh, in this case, I have my name, which is this. I can enter my department and then add, for example, let's say information systems. Okay, And this would become an object. This would become a JSON object. Okay, uh, If you want to see it as a as a tree over here, you can see that this object over here has two items inside it. And the first item is key, is the name. And the value of that name is Muhammad Misbahadeen, which is my name. And then we have the department, which is information systems. Okay. So, uh, and you can also have, let's say, for example, uh, 
say uh, room number whichever I just wanted to add like two zero six eight say okay uh, so this would be uh, it doesn't accept more uh, a bigger number in this case or I have Mr. Comma over here yes right. okay so this would be department and room number is two zero six eight so this is this is a number it can also accept boolean well, values let's say is available so a string that says that if I'm available in my office or not so if it says uh, true or false so if it's uh, let's say make it false uh, again I missed the comma so if it's false then it would not appear over here so a history reviewer is available false so as you can see that uh, imagine the JSON object as a collection of key and value pairs uh, keys will identify the values that are stored inside it and each of these pairs will be separated by a comma and these values can either be uh, text can be strings or can be uh, boolean as well okay uh, so this is how you store a json json this is how you create a json object as i mentioned earlier a json object is a complicated data structure so we're gonna move on step by step of how to add a complex date complex json structure and this if you can see here we have again a key which is the which is the this is the name over here and the value over here instead of being a string or a number or a boolean we have it as an array of values so this value this key let's say for example uh, the list of courses i'm teaching this semester and this could be the list of the course codes that i'm teaching so it could be like uh, 912323 and then it could be let's let's make it simpler so it's a three to three and four to zero okay so what it's doing over here is i created an array the value of this uh this key is not just one value it is a, it's an array of items inside it so let's see inside the tree how it looks like so, so you can see that over here whenever it, it's, an, it's an object it will be by a curly brackets whenever it's it is an array it will be inside the square bracket so you can see over here in this in this object that I have, I have key value pairs, and one of the one of the keys over here, it's not a simple data structure, it is an array. And it has two items inside it. So if I make it extend it, you can see that I have two items. The keys of those items as zero and one, as you know that arrays are assigned keys automatically. So this will be zero and one. And then you have those values here inside, which says three two three and four two zero, which I have entered over here. Okay, so this is how you can uh, add an array inside a JSON object. You can also have an object inside an object. So JSON, you as an array, as as you did with an array, you can also have it as a JSON with an uh, an object inside an object. So let's see how we can do that. Let's say, for example, I want to add my contact information. Okay. In the contact information, this is not a simple contact. I have my, uh, you know, office number. I can have my mobile number. I can have my email address. So it's not one contact information. I have multiple modes of contact. So in, in that case, uh, I need to have, and each of them will have, like for example, more items. So what I will do is I will create an object inside. So if I start with the curly brackets over here, that means it is an object. And inside this, I can have again key values so uh, imagine this would be a sub part of it so uh, this this again this object can again have key value pairs can also have an array can also have again an object inside it so you can nest an object inside another object inside a json file so if i do it like this contact what i would do is i would create i would create a contact object and then a contact uh, key and inside that i will have key value pairs again okay because it's an object that's why i'm having key value pairs if i just needed some values i could use an array instead of an object so if i go over here i can say let's say office number which would be let's say uh, one three five eight nine two five three okay and then uh, i have to use commas again uh, then i could put my email address okay which would be over here And I can go on. Let's say, for example, I can put my cell number, uh, my mobile number, which I'm not going to put, but I'm just going to show you how to do that. So, so 50, let's say XXXX, something like that. Okay. 
So now if I key, if I look at this output, you can see that over here, it changed this to a bracket. So this one, if it was a square bracket, then it means that it was an array of object, array of items inside it. But if it was a curly bracket over here, now it means that this is an object inside this main object. So if you look down inside it, this I have my office number, I have my email address, and I have my mobile number. So this is how a JSON object looks like. So that is a complicated structure which can have single key value pairs. It can also have an array of values inside it, or it can have objects inside it. And objects would again have more items inside them, which is like oh, which is key values, or it can also have an array or an object again inside it. So it can be as deep as you want it to go, based on the type of data that you are representing. That's the that is the the strong point of having uh, having a JSON structure is that your data can be represented as you like and it is representative because you are actually storing the key and the value together so whenever you want to search for it you can actually look for the, the key values and get key key and then you can get the value pairs uh, associated with it now let's go on to the the next step which is the last part of it how a json uh, json file looks like and this is a more complicated one this is how actually most of the data in in real life is in real uh, web services is organized and that is arrays can include other objects so an array in our understanding in the previous example i gave you an array was a set of values only single values Okay. It could be like uh, text, or it could be it could be strings, it could be numbers, it could be booleans, but it is just single values. And the keys assigned to them, as you can see on the right hand side, these are automatically done zero and one. So what we need to understand over here is arrays can also the can have objects as its values, which is becomes a little bit more representative of real life data. So let me give you an example over here. So here we 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 saw that courses was an array and I included the list of courses that I was teaching but the problem is just looking at the numbers I don't know which courses am I teaching right so each of these items will have more details inside it so for example the course code the course number the section I'm teaching the number of students I have and, and information like this so I cannot represent it by using an array simple array so it has to be an array of objects because each object we can have key value pairs representing each one of them. So how do we do that? So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to make them separate first, because this is an array, it, it will remain an array. And inside the array, each one of them will become an object. So I'm going to put curly brackets around them. Okay, now to make it more representative, each, as we, as we saw in the previous ones, each object will have something, which is key and values. So let's start with the first one, say course code, which will be 323, right? And let's go to the next one, which is the course name, which will be, let's say, web-based systems, okay? And then for this, we will have, let's say, the section I'm teaching for this course, let's say one, okay? And number of students, this would be, let's say, 12, okay? And that would be the end of the object, end of the object, okay? The next one, we'll do the same thing with this. We'll do the course code and all these things. I don't want to copy it again, so not, because it will be the same structure as before. Uh, and then we just update these values, which will be 420. Uh, this will be project implementation. So let's say 42 and the number of students let's say four okay and then if you look at the, the output you can see that the course still is an array and when you look when you expand it each item of that array inside it is a is a uh, is a object and each object you can have course code course name each object it has key value pairs inside it and which will be how it looks like so you can see that uh, a JSON structure is, is easy to read you can see that it has some key value pairs it has arrays and objects it has uh, objects inside it or array of objects but this is how a JSON file looks like 
So whenever you make a request to an API, this is something that you will receive in response. The structure of every file that you receive will be different based on what data are you requesting. So that's why in the last part of this, this section, we will learn to use an example API and we can see that these API creators, whoever is having this API, will tell you what kind of information is sent back to you and how it is organized so you can understand how to use them. So let's take an example. The last part of this is, uh, let's here in, in this example, you can see that we have an, an object, JSON object, which is starting with a parentheses. And inside that we have one key, which is book. And that is an array of objects. You can see it starts with an array, which is square brackets over here. And inside that, you have two objects inside it. And these objects, they have ID of the book, the language of the book, the edition of the book, and the author of the book. So if you look at it in a representative way, book is an array. And each item inside the array is an object. And each object inside will have key value pairs. Okay. Now, the question is, if you are given a JSON data structure, how do you access it? How do you use the data from inside of the JSON file? So let's take two examples over here. So let's say we, we use the same example that we saw earlier, say book, and we have two, uh, it's an array, and it has two objects inside it, which is uh, of index zero and index one, and each of them have their key and value pairs. Now, first question I might ask you, whenever you use a JSON object, first of all, you have to store it inside a variable. If you want to use it in, in, in JavaScript, you have to store this JSON object inside a variable. When we receive it from an external file, we have to first parse it. So we'll learn how to do that later on when we are actually do, using a file. So here, let's assume that this data structure, this, this JSON file is stored inside a variable called JSON underscore file. If I ask you a question that given this, uh, given this JSON uh, variable, how do you get the total number of books inside it? So it's an array, right? Book is an array. So how do you get the total number of books? We want to just find the length of this book. So how do you get the length of the book? So first of all, you know that it's stored inside JSON file. So that's why you say JSON underscore file. And then we use the dot notation because if you remember in JavaScript, we use dot notations to access the properties of an object. So, and then book is a property, it's a key. So that we say dot book. Now we don't need to go deeper inside it because we just want the number of books inside it. And we learn that dot length is a property used by arrays to get the length of the array. And that's how you get the number of books. The next example that we can take over here is, suppose I want to find the language of the first book. So in this case, we start with again with the JSON file, the array, that is that the, the, the object is stored inside. We use the dot notation, say book, which is the first key that we are interested in. Since it's an array and we are interested in the first book and arrays always start with index zero, so we specify the index, which is zero, dot again, because now we went inside the first one and this first one is an object. So again, we have to use the dot operator. So we say dot, and then we specify the key of the first one, which is language. And the value that will be returned is Java. Similarly, we can do the same thing with getting the author name of the second book, which is JSON file and dot book, which is the name of the key, the first key. This is an array, and we want the second one, so that's why I use index one, and then dot author, which is the author of the second book. Okay, so, this is how JSON objects work like. So I hope this is clear. In the next one, we will start with some basic concepts about uh, why mm, JSON or why JSON is used in, in web-based systems. And then we will use uh, to understand how a, what is AJAX and how do we use AJAX step-by-step. Step. And then you can practice this exercise by your own.